Hi biologists. Okay, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about muscles. Uh, muscles are vital, obviously, in your body, and you have about 650 different muscles, and they make up about half of your body mass. Now, you need to know that there are three different types of muscles. There are skeletal muscles, cardiac muscles, and involuntary also called smooth muscles and you have to be able to identify diagrams of each of them. So the first one we're going to look at are cardiac muscles um, and cardiac as the name suggests are found in the heart and they are involuntary muscles. You don't have to think about making your heart contract. Um, so if you look at the uh, picture here, you can see that it has some very faint stripes on it. Um, and stripes in biology terms are referred to as striations. And so we refer to this as striated muscle, um, but it is specialised striated because it is found within the heart. And if you look again at this picture, you can see that the cells are really branched um, so they don't split where there's a new branch they don't split off into a new new branch necessarily um, the cells are branched and they're also interconnected and there is one nucleus per cell so they are uninucleate um, the bottom picture there the histology so that's a microscope slide there um, you can see the faint striations there and to recognize that this is cardiac muscle is that you've got kind of white spaces in between uh, the muscle fibers these muscles muscle fibers all contract together as one so of course so that the heart beats as one um, and some of the muscles fibers are referred to as myogenic and myogenic means that they twitch so the next muscle type are the involuntary muscles, so ones obviously where there is no conscious control and they are controlled by the autonomic nervous system. Um, if you look at the diagram here, they are non-striated, they don't have any stripes, they're spindle shaped and again they're uninucleate, so there's only one nucleus per cell. Um, they are slow at contracting but they do contract for a relatively long period of time and we find these muscles on the walls of particular organs so the walls of the intestines where they use to help squeeze um, the food along by a process called peristalsis they're also in the walls of the stomach the bladder and the walls of the blood vessels So finally, we're on to the skeletal muscles. So those are ones obviously attached to your skeleton and they are ones that you use in voluntary or conscious movement. And if you look at those, again, they also have a striped or striated pattern, but they are this pattern isn't as faint as it was with the cardiac muscle. Um, the cells themselves are tubular um, and they have got many nuclei within one cell. So they are referred to as multinucleate. Um, cells where there is more than one nucleus um, have to have an extra nucleus because the cells are so large. And that's actually what's, what the reason is here, is that these cells um, originally started off as individual cells, but then in the embryo, they started to fuse together. And so we end up with multinucleate larger cells. Um, they contract in one direction, the contractions are very rapid, but they contract only for a very short period of time. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at the skeletal muscle in a little bit more detail. So this picture shows a whole muscle and that's divided into sections. Each one is called a fascicle and then that is made up of single muscle fibres and then that's one cell and then we have that made up of um, kind of sections called myofibrils. So if we look at one of those cells, the muscle fibre in a bit more detail, you can see that they're made up of bundles of um, proteins actually which are referred to as myofibrils um, and they are all bundled together and enclosed by one plasma membrane um, and what we do is we call that the sarcolemma 
It is still the plasma membrane, but we've just changed the name um, for the use within muscles. So it's referred to as the sarcolemma, and the sarcolemma has got foldings within it, or which are called transverse or T-tubules, and the foldings allow um, for electrical impulses to be spread evenly across the muscle. So if an impulse um, is traveling, then we want the muscle con to contract together and not have kind of bits contracting at different times. So by having in foldings, um, it allows for that to happen. So this slide now also shows the nucleus. So the nucleus isn't round as you would normally expect. It's slightly flattened um, and you can see that within this cell, within this fibre, we have several different nuclei and so the cell is multinucleate. The other structure that you can see within this cell, within this fibre, is the sarcoplasmic reticulum. This is basically a modified endoplasmic reticulum and this is throughout the cell, throughout the fibre, and it contains a lot of calcium ions which are needed for contraction when we go on to contraction next lesson. Um, also, if you looked within the cell, you'd also find many mitochondria because obviously we need ATP, um, so we need energy for the contraction process. If we look at this diagram again um, and focus in on the myofibril, which is one of those bundles that we find within that fibre, within the, that cell, um, we recognise that the myofibril is made up of two different types of proteins. It's made up of actin, which is a thin filament and it's got two strands twisted together. We're going to look at its structure um, next time in more detail. And also a second protein called myosin. This one's a bit thicker and it's kind of got like heads that stick out almost like balloons, like string with a balloon on the end that sticks out from the side. And again, we'll look at that in more detail next time when we're looking at how muscle contraction occurs. So this is a picture of our myofibril um, in transverse section, so end on. So there you can see the thinner actin filaments interdispersed between those thicker myosin filaments. So on the left here, we've got exactly the same diagram that we've just seen with our myosin and actin um, filaments in transverse section. And that, if you move over to the diagram on the right, um, that's the end on of that diagram there. So remember that there are lots and lots of these bundles, okay, these myofibrils contained within one fibre, in one cell. And there are lots of labels you have to be able to add to these diagrams. Um, the first thing to recognise is that we have light bands and dark bands, and it's those light and dark bands that cause the striations, the stripes, when you look at those cells underneath the microscope. So the light band is referred to the isotrophic or the I band, and that area is only made of actin, that protein. We've got the dark band, which is the anisotrophic or the A band, and that is made up of myosin overlapping with actin. In the middle of that light band, we call it the Z line, and that is the very center of each of the light bands. Then we've got the H zone, which is made of myosin only, and one unit, which is where we go from Z line to Z line, is referred to as one sarcomere. Okay, and sarcomere, one unit, uh, one sarcomere is um, what you need to understand when we look at muscle contraction next time. So if you look at the bottom diagram here, that's got the actin and the myosin filaments lined up a bit better so that you can see them. So the thick filaments, remember the thick filaments are the protein myosin. So that's the green colour there. So you've got they're not continuous throughout the whole fibre. So you have one section, then a space, then the next section of myosin, then a space, then the next section. And then they're overlapped by that thinner actin protein. And so by looking at that bottom diagram there, it's easier to understand really where the light and where the dark bands fall. So the light bands on the bottom diagram there are just the regions 
with the um, with the thinner actin filament. Where the two overlap, so where you've got the actin and the myosin overlapping with each other, then you have the darker region. And you can see here the two Z lines. So the Z lines fall in the region where we only have the actin filaments. Okay, and that's the center, central point. It doesn't really exist, um, but we just refer to it as the Z line because then we go from Z line to Z line to create one sarcomere, one unit within a muscle.